It's the first time we've seen this virus, but viruses follow certain trajectories. I mean, there are statistical models that people make to try to understand what's happening. And so, you know, some people are getting upset that China might not release exactly what the numbers are, or there might be more cases than we know about. But the overall trend in terms of how many new cases are reported per day compared to the day before, or the overall trend in terms of how many deaths we're seeing on a given day versus the day before, that graph has a shape, and that tells you a lot about what to expect to have happen. And right now that graph is on an upward swing, right? And so it's, well, I don't know the, the uh, I don't know the language of the economists, but yeah. in science we call it a nonlinear effect, right? And so what that means is you can't just put a, a straight line through the graph and keep extrapolating to what's going to happen. This is a curve that swings up and then levels off. And so it's not linear. And so even though it's not, we can't just sort of extrapolate to what's happened in the past and just keep doing that math over and over, uh, we can figure out that this thing is going to level off off at some point and behave the way other viruses do. So people are always looking for the signs of that. They're, they're probably looking to hear what different governments around the world are doing. Um, in the case of here in Canada and these cases in Ontario, mm -hmm. um, people are trying to figure out from officials, how, what are you doing to, to contain this? Right. What, what are the kinds of things you're watching for? What are, we, what are we worried about? So yeah. one thing that's totally on my radar that I think needs to be resolved as soon as possible is that officials in China, from their equivalent of the CDC, are saying that there are cases of people who are passing on the virus before they have any symptoms. That people, and, and that is possible, but that is an extraordinarily uh, uncommon thing, and that is something that you really need proof before you get behind, according to the CDC. So the CDC has said, we are not saying that's not true, but we have not seen data to support that bold claim that people could be catching it. And so, of course, if you could pass it before you had symptoms, the spread of this thing would be much more, could be much more severe globally than if it's always after symptoms show up that people have spread it. And that's a big question mark. So that's one of the things I think that people want to know the answer to so that they can make a prediction about how communicable this is. One important number that yeah. comes out of this is a 2.6, and that is the, um, the contagiousness of this disease. And what that means is for every person that gets the disease, they give it to 2.6 people on average. And what you want is a contagiousness that is below one so that it starts to drop off. As long as that number is below, above one, 2.6, that means that this is continuing to spread and get bigger. I'm glad you mentioned that because in the case here in Canada with the gentleman who came back from China and now the second case, we're talking about his wife. So the, yes. these people who are in close proximity, and I guess the, the health officials said that they're, they're looking to they're looking backwards mm -hmm. and, and, and speaking to the people who are within, I call it a two meter radius, right. basically. Okay, so it sounds counterintuitive. So you, let, there's a lot to break down there. So first of all, it's not two independent cases, like one person flew into Edmonton and one person flew into Quebec, and those are two separate cases. This is a, a gentleman who uh, came back to Toronto from China, and the second case is his wife. So she may have caught it from him, or they may have been together in China somewhere that they both caught it independently. That's unknown, but for now, you can kind of treat it as one one case with two replicates, so to speak. So yeah. that's very different from two independent cases. The second thing is he came in on a plane and he had symptoms on the plane. And so people would think you got to get everybody who was on that plane and get them all tested. But it turns out airplanes are a very good environment for not spreading disease. They really they recycle the air so aggressively. A, a modern aircraft has brand new air every two to three minutes. It gets recycled, uh, half of it gets recycled and the part that's recycled goes through filters that can pick up viruses. So if you're with a giant crowd of people, in fact, you want to be on an airplane. And so the way that this disease is spread is when people cough or sneeze, it's those droplets, it's liquid droplets. And those tend to be within a two meter radius. So what officials are doing is looking for people that were within two meters okay. of these people on that airplane because they're people who might have been coughed on or sneezed on or shaken hands with or something like that. But it's not gonna spread through the whole plane through the air. I'm sure some people have seen a movie called Contagion where, <laughs> like, hey, you know, people yes. search everything, right? Sure. And um, uh, I remember there's a scene where um, someone's trying to figure out because one of their employees was affected by mm -hmm. this. They had received a, a, you know, a box in the mail and one of these officials in the movie says, well, you know, you, it, you know, that travels for 10 days overseas. Like, you're not going to get it that way. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of what people need to know about if you touch something or someone was touching something or you're in a public 
couple of places. Right. What should you be thinking about? Unfortunately, it's a big question mark how long this virus can live outside a human body. We okay. don't know that. We know that the time between when people are infected and when they start to show symptoms can range from anywhere between two days and about 14 days. So there's quite a spread there. But, you know, the things we do during flu season to avoid getting sick with the flu are the same things that are going to work for this. The coronavirus, the common cold is a coronavirus. This is a coronavirus. So it's, it's hand sanitizer, it's coughing into your elbow, and it's if you don't feel well, you stay home, you avoid people who are sick. And that is, it, by large part, I mean, everybody's wearing masks. Yeah. But by large part, it's just, it's, it's the common sense stuff. Dan, real quickly before we go, um, you've covered a lot of these stories in your career. Um, and we just talk about how everyone's connected today, right? Yes. We've all got these supercomputers in our um, pocket, uh, and they're telling us all the new information. They all perhaps are also telling us things that might not be accurate and maybe making us fearful. Yeah. So how do we navigate through that? I always try to go with numbers. Uh, and, and so for me, I, it does look scary. And I see the footage that comes from a hospital room in China, and it does look scary. But, you know, the 80 confirmed deaths from this. The flu this year in the United States has killed 8,000 people. And we don't freak out about the flu. So, you know, you, ha you have to think numerically. You have to think about it. It is something to definitely keep an eye on. Right now, it's, it's a big problem in China. It is not a problem in Canada. Uh, but that could change. And so it's something to watch right now. But I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about my family and me right at this stage. It, until things change dramatically, I think uh, health-wise, things are, things are going to be okay.